This video is going to cover section 5.1 on continuous probability functions. So by the end of chapter 5, you should be able to recognize and understand continuous probability density functions in general. You should be able to recognize the uniform probability distribution and apply it appropriately. Recognize the exponential probability distribution and apply it appropriately. And continuous random variables have many applications, baseball batting averages, IQ scores, the length of time a long distance telephone call lasts, the amount of money a person carries, the length of time a computer chip lasts, and SAT scores are just a few. The field of reliability depends on a variety of continuous random variables. So um, continuous random var variables is a different than discrete random variables, which we talked about in the last chapter in chapter four. So continuous random variables are ones where you can have, you know, values in between um, the countable numbers. So in between one and two, between two and three. So it's decimals, fractions, as well as the whole numbers. Um, but the values of discrete and continuous random variables can sometimes be a little ambiguous and confusing. So if X is equal to the number of miles to the nearest mile you drive to work, then it's a discrete random variable because you're counting the miles. But if you define X as the distance you drive, as the distance you drive to work, then you're measuring those values and then that would be a continuous random variable. So it's really important when you're reading problems or when you're designing a study or asking a question that you know which one are you asking? Are you asking about something that you're going to count or something you're going to measure? Another example of this is if you let X equal the number of books in a backpack, then X is a discrete random variable because you're counting the number of books. But if you define X to be the weight of the backpack or the book, then it's a continuous random variable because weights are measured. Okay, so just a little bit of difference to keep in mind. How you define it is really important. So properties of continuous probability distributions. So the graph of a continuous probably probability distribution is a curve, and the probability is represented by the area underneath that curve. The curve, curve is called the probability density function, just like with discrete random variables. We use the symbol f of x to represent the curve, and f of x is the function, which basically means equation, that corresponds to the shape of the graph. Underneath that curve, that graph, um, is the area, and that's given by a different function that we call the cumulative distribution function, which we're going to abbreviate as the CDF. And the CDF is what we use to evaluate the probability as area. So um, when we're talking about continuous probability distributions, again, our outcomes are measured, not counted. The entire area under the curve and above the x-axis is equal to 1, so all of the area underneath that equation, that curve, is equal to 1. We find our probability for intervals of x values rather than for individual x values because, again, because it's continuous, you have to look at an interval versus discrete where you would just look at specific values. And so the probability that x is greater than c and less than d is the probability that the random variable x is in between the values of c and d and is the area under the curve, above the x-axis, and between c and d on your graph. We're going to look at pictures. It'll make more sense. And then the probability that x equals c is 0 because of this idea of it being the area. So the area below the curve above the x-axis between C and C has no width, so it has no area, so that probability is zero. Because of that, um, the probability that x is greater than C and less than D is the same as x is greater than or equal to C or and less than or equal to D. That inclusion and exclusion piece um, doesn't change our probabilities because those exact values have no area. So that is the video on section 